This is John Young with the Disc Jockey News. I'm doing kind of a little bit of a different segment right now. We're looking at portable hard drives, or hard drives in general, I guess. Not all of them are portable. Well, they're in laptops, except for the iMac. Now I'm confusing myself. We're talking hard drives. We're talking access speed on hard drives. We're using a Blackmagic design hard drive test, which is, uh, for those of you who have played with some Blackmagic thing, they do a lot of things with uh, capturing of HDMI signal, bringing it into computers, being able to do some things with it to manipulate that a little bit for streaming. So it's really kind of cool stuff. And they've got a, a little application that will allow you to test the speeds, the access speeds, the read and write of hard drives. So what I've done is I've taken 13 different hard drives. A couple of them I've, I've used twice, but some are in computers, such as I'm do, going to be doing a Retina, MacBook uh, Retina. I've got a MacBook Air we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at a Mac, iMac i7, which is this guy that's doing this recording right now. And then I've got a 2011 MacBook Pro. We're also going to be looking at thumb drives. We're going to be looking at different speeds uh, or as far as different connections. USB 3, uh, USB 2, FireWire 400, FireWire 800. And of course, the internal, which you will find on those computers. I'll put my findings in the description below because we're going to be kind of going through. We're not going to be going through in any order. We're just basically going through the order in which... They show up on a computer, but I'll put, the, put all the information so you can check that out and kind of follow along in the description below. So let's get started. Our first hard drive is an older one that I've had for quite a long time. This one has a, the shell was one that I bought from Otherworld Computing, uh, OWC, or MacSales.com. It's a little 80 gigabyte hard drive. It's a little, maybe it might be an EIDE, I'm not exactly sure uh, what was in that because I, this was a long time ago. But it's a two and a half inch hard drive, it's bus powered, and this one is a FireWire 400 connection. Let's take a look at how it rated. Now you see in the Blackmagic Design Speed Test, we've got our two big gauges there as you take a look at that. And it also has all the information down below. What it's basically doing is telling us is if this hard drive is fast enough for doing different types of video streaming. And you'll see there's a lot of options on that, you can see that in the video. Well, in this particular case, this particular hard drive with the FireWire 400 tested out at 18.8 megabytes a second, and the read was 19.1. Not very fast. Let's take a look at our next hard drive. Our next hard drive is one I actually use on the road quite a bit. This is actually where I keep all my music videos for my DJ performance. This is a G technology, and this is a one terabyte drive. Uh, it's bus powered and it is a USB 3 or a FireWire 800 drive. So I purchased this actually back when I was using the, the MacBook Pro, you're going to see a little bit later, the, the 2011. I purchased this because I wanted to have that 800, FireWire 800 capability, and then I wanted to have it so I could move with me to the Retina now, which has USB 3. So this hard drive, one terabyte, a little bit faster. Let's check the specs. This is testing it with the FireWire 800 connection. As you can see, the speed for the write was 64.9, and the speed for the read was 74.1. Cool part about it is, with the FireWire 800, I'm now able to get, you can see that there's some green checks going on at the bottom. It's now moving fast enough for us to actually do something with, compared to our first drive, which wasn't at FireWire 400, and, and that older drive wasn't fast enough to do anything with. Now, let's take a look at it when we jump it over to USB 3. Now, we're looking at the same G Technology hard drive, one terabyte, nothing's changed except the connection. And you can see we've had a substantial jump. We're up to 98.6 megabytes a second of writing, and the reading is 100.4. So we're getting faster, but you'll see that it really didn't give us any more little checks on the grid below. Let's take a look at the next hard drive. So the computer that's doing all the work right now and pretty much does all of our streaming work in the office is an iMac. It's an i5. It's actually 27 inch. I'm not sure if this is a picture of a 27 inch or not, but that's what we use. The particular computer we're using right now has a 500 gigabyte SSD inside. So it's pretty quick. Let's take a look at the specs on the test. Now this one we're seeing a substantial jump because now we're just going to an internal hard drive and it's an SSD. So we have speeds up to 413.7 megabits a second and the read is 456 which looking below you're seeing a lot of the green down below there you're seeing a lot of green checks this of course can do a lot of video things that so far the other hard drives we've looked at couldn't do let's continue and this is one of the questions I've had from a few people they've asked you know could we store videos on a thumb drive and access those on a computer well most thumb drives are USB 2 and they aren't fast enough to really do much with video especially if you have they have to pull those off, access those. I have used them a little bit, but the part where you have problems is if you're trying to mix from one video to another and they're both on the same thumb drive, it doesn't work. You end up crashing the system. Well, not crashing the system, but you end up with hiccups and drop frames and all this. But as you see, this is Alexar. This is a USB 3.0. 
and it's 128 gig on this one, and I wanted to give it a try. So let's take a look at its test results. I want to do the Lexar with two different computers because I do use two different computers quite often. So the first one you're looking at, this is the MacBook Air results with that USB 3 thumb drive plugged in. And you're seeing you get a 57.8 in the write and you're getting a 111.3 in the read. Good enough to do some video playback for the DJ world, but when you're getting into doing some of the higher end video things, it's not enough. But this is on the MacBook Air. Let's take a look at that same thumb drive on a different computer. Now remember, same thumb drive, 128 gigabyte USB 3 thumb drive, but now we're on the Retina, the MacBook Retina. And you'll see that our numbers have really kind of fallen on that. We're getting a, a 41 megabyte a second write. We're getting an 89 read. So just going from the MacBook Air to the Retina definitely changed the speed in which we were able to access that thumb drive. Let's continue. And here is that MacBook Air we've just been talking about. I really like the MacBook Air. For those of you who haven't checked one out, I wasn't a real big fan when they first came out. I thought, oh, gosh, who'd want to have that? It basically is an overpriced whatever, whatever, whatever. After using it for a while, I'm really a huge fan of it. And now I want to show you how it tested out. This is the results from the MacBook Air. As you can see, basically it pegged out their little their little dials right there. Um, a write speed of 614.6 megabit a second and the read of 721.3 very fast you can see basically we have checks almost all the way down uh, i was surprised not so much surprised that the macbook air could do this but i th figured comparing this to about the same model year retina we'd be seeing similar results we'll get to the retina in just a sec before we get to that retina i wanted to show you this is the macbook pro from 2011. this is one that i was djing with up until i bought the retina Worked well, wonderfully. It's an i7, very quick, good processor. I was pretty happy with it. But now I understand why, as I was getting into higher quality videos, I was starting to have problems with videos and frame drop. Let's take a look at the speed of the hard drive on this guy. Now, on this particular one, my MacBook Pro from 2011, it had a 750 gigabyte. This was a traditional hard drive that spins. It wasn't any kind of a, a flash drive or an SSD. So we're talking a traditional hard drive. And again, it worked wonderfully, but you're seeing the speed test. We're getting a write of 76.9 and a read of 53.4. Well, I'm actually somewhat surprised that there's that many checks showing up right there because as I was getting toward the end of my use of that laptop for DJ work when I was doing video, if I'd get into the trying to mix two 720p videos, I was having some issues. Let's go to the next computer. Which brings us to the Mac Retina. This is a 2013 version of the Mac Retina. It has a 250 gigabyte SSD in it. Uh, i7, very fast at the time. It was pretty much the fastest machine that they were producing. Let's take a look at its test results. Now this surprised me. I expected the Retina, because of it being much more expensive and all the different components with it, to be faster or as fast as a MacBook Air. In this particular test, it wasn't the case. Both of them have SSD, or well, one has a flash memory, the other has an SSD, and maybe that's part of it. But in this particular case, you're getting a 208.8 write, and you're getting a 419 per read, which is certainly, as you see with all the different, different arrows and such right here, it's certainly fast enough to do a lot of video things. But because of that flash memory in that, that MacBook Air, it was actually faster for reading and accessing that hard drive than the Retina is. Continuing on, we're getting into a little bit higher end hard drive this particular time. This is a, an enclosure I purchased from OWC, Other World Computing. This is their Mercury Elite Pro. It's, it's one of their higher end enclosures. This particular enclosure has USB 3 and it has FireWire 800. I really like this enclosure, but I wanted to put a specific hard drive in. So I bought the enclosure and then I bought the Western Digital Black Series, a four terabyte hard drive that's inside that because, well, on my main computer, I have got two four terabyte hard drives backing it up, and then I want to make a backup of those two. So this becomes a backup of the backup of the backup. Let's see its results. So the enclosure with the Western Digital Black Series, which is one of their higher end hard drives inside it, which is a, a SATA type drive. It's not any kind of an SSD or anything four terabyte, it wouldn't be. But the speeds on this, I guess I was kind of a little disappointed once again. Uh, the write of getting 64.2 megabytes a second and the read of getting 137.7. I don't use this for DJ work. It is a wall powered. It's not a bus powered in this particular case. You have to plug this one into the wall. Speeds, pretty decent. But I would have thought with the, the amount of money I spent on that enclosure and the amount of money I spent on that hard drive, this wasn't a cheap drive compared to something you buy at the shelf at a big box store. 
It's pretty expensive. And again, it's write speeds were kind of disappointing. Speaking of a hard drive off the shelf at a big box store, this is the only Seagate in my test. It's the only Seagate I have anymore. I used to have a few of them, but they seem to die on me very quickly. This is a two terabyte Seagate. It's a USB 3. It's a powered unit, meaning that it has to be plugged in. It's actually what's backing up this iMac. It becomes the time machine for this iMac. We tested a similar Western Digital, and now we're testing a Seagate. Let's take a look at the results here. USB 3, Seagate, plugged in, two terabyte, 193.5 megabyte for the write, 193.3 <laughs> on the read. Wow, talk about consistent. As you're seeing, we're getting in some nice, again, down here, we're getting some nice green check marks. So it's it's doing something, and it's able to do quite a bit, actually, much more than some of the other things that we looked at earlier. So I was kind of surprised at that a little bit because I didn't expect the Seagate to, in really many ways, blow that that more expensive option that I put together myself out of the water, which it's doing. So another big box store type purchase. This is a Toshiba three terabyte hard drive, USB three. I bought this at again one of the big the big stores there, and this would be very probably similar to that Seagate we just looked at, except we're going from a two terabyte and a Seagate to a three terabyte. Let's take a look at the test results. Test results again fairly consistent: one fifty nine point eight and one fifty five point one. Still really good results. We're getting some nice green checks on the side. Not as high as some of the other things we've looked at, especially the internal things when you're getting into SSD, but very functional. It is, again, wall-powered. It's not a bus-powered. Nice hard drive, and it's been, I've used that one probably, that's, again, that one I'm using for backup. I think that's been running for about a year now without any problem. Now we're getting into some bus-powered USB 3 hard drives, and we've got the Western Digital My Passport. A very common hard drive. You can find this at just about any big box store or any electronic store for that matter. It's a nice little hard drive. Does a nice job. This particular one is one terabyte. Let's take a look at its test results. Again, USB 3, one terabyte. This is the My Passport. Keep keep that in mind. There's because we have another one. It's a My Passport, but it's an Ultra. It is a 55.8 for the write. It has a 73.2 for the read. So it can do some things. It could do your video if you needed to stream some things and do some video work where you're mixing. But if you're doing some really high-end or high-resolution video, not going to work too well for you. Let's continue on. I think this is kind of cool. This is the cheaper version, by the way. This is just the My Passport. The My Passport Ultra is next. Again, Western Digital, My Passport Ultra, very much the same look as the hard drive we just looked at. This particular one is a 2 terabyte hard drive, USB 3, uh, bus-powered. A nice little hard drive. I've actually been using this one. I have all my music and everything backed up on this one that I take to shows with me because I take my main computer and then I take a secondary computer and the secondary has music but not enough space for videos so all the videos are on this thing plus it has the music so in case something happened and I got somewhere and I literally had to use someone else's computer I had to buy a computer or something off the shelf I could function with this hard drive if I need to. Let's take a look at its test results. Now the interesting thing with this is the regular My Passport was a little bit higher, not by much. It was like 55 to 52, but the, the write was just a little bit higher. But the read on the Ultra is about 25 megabyte per second higher than it was on the regular one. So it's interesting. The write a little bit slower, the read considerably faster. Again, this would work for the times when you're reading the videos off that hard drive and using it to play. It would work pretty well for most DJs. Continuing looking at our bus powered Western Digital hard drives, because I've bought a few of those over the years. Again, big box store type purchases. This one was a kind of an, I didn't see any kind of a model on this particular one. It had the fine model number, but psh, whatever. It's an older one. It's a USB 2. It's 500 gigabyte. A nice job. It does. It, I've used it for just basically backing up certain files and different things. So I have some important documents backed up, and then I store this in a different location. So that way, if something happens in one location, the other at least should have some of that information. Let's take a look at the results of this speed test. And this somewhat surprised me also because I was under the understanding for so long that that USB 2 was slower than FireWire 400. And of course, it might have been that my FireWire 400 that we tested was a slower a slower hard drive. That's completely possible. But in this particular case, we're getting a write of 27.9 and a read of 32.5. And as you look, it only says what we can do a little bit with the video. There's only a couple of green green checks there. Not really functional for the video world. So that concludes my completely non-scientific speed of hard drive test. We found out that some of the bus powered ones could function very well. We found out that some of the powered ones didn't function as well as I would have thought. And of course, 
even related to the money you spend on it really didn't relate as well as it should have, which is kind of disappointing. So not scientific, not anything more than just a conversation piece. I'll put this information you're seeing right here. I'll put this in the description below so you guys can take a look at that. These are hard drives that are, some are a few months old, some are a few years old, but it's kind of food for thought. This is John Young with the Disc Jockey News. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah.